Hello and welcome to Swipe. Coming up, to boldly go on a joy ride into the unknown, is 2014 the year when commercial space travel becomes a reality. Facebook's financial figures how the world's biggest tech firms have been performing. Eating on the internet, welcome to the weird world of gastronomic voyeurism. And it's on like Donkey Kong in our preview of some of the hottest games that will be coming out soon. Well, when you think of space travel, you might imagine Neil Armstrong stepping onto the moon or Yuri Gagarin orbiting the Earth. But what about the likes of Justin Bieber or Katy Perry? They both booked seats on Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic spaceship. Why not if you've got a spare 160,000 quid for a ticket? Virgin is promising to be ready for blast off very soon. So is 2014 going to be the year when commercial space travel finally gets off the ground? Sky's Chloe Culpin has been finding out. It promises to be the experience of a lifetime. At 50,000 feet, the VSS Enterprise is released. A rocket motor ignites. And within seven or eight seconds, passengers will be travelling at the speed of sound, hurtling away from the Earth's surface. Then, for just a few minutes, the silence of space. Virgin Galactic hopes suborbital flights will open up space travel to the masses. And after an exhaustive testing programme that's taken nine years, it's hoped the first commercial flight will be able to take off later this year. Space access has remained very much a 20th century product. Um, so the rockets that are used are, are not particularly efficient, uh, they're not particularly safe, particularly if you have people on, on board. And they're very, very expensive and they're all controlled by government. So we, we do think uh, that this is the, the right time for the second space age, that that's going to be led to a much greater extent by the private sector. One of the final stages is going to be getting the spacecraft licensed for public use. And there's no shortage of members of the public who want to fly. The company has accepted $70 million worth of deposits from around 580 people so far. That's 10% of the total number of people who have ever gone into space. High prices may put some people off now, but eventually it's hoped the experience will become more affordable. I would hope within a decade or two, you know, it becomes within the realms of a, you know, a trip of a lifetime for a large number of people. In the long term, the company hopes to build bigger ships that could orbit for longer stretches and go even further. It's talked about cruises around the moon. But why stop there? Infamous entrepreneur Elon Musk's California company SpaceX has set its sights on Mars. It sees reusability as the key, building a rocket that could fly more than once to sustainably try to reduce transportation costs. He thinks this could be key to making human life multiplanetary. In Oxfordshire, there's been another breakthrough in aerospace technology. The astronomical cooling rates of reaction engines design means a plane could accelerate to five times the speed of sound, turning itself into a rocket to fly into orbit. Now, Skylon, which is being developed in the UK, is going to be a world-beating vehicle. And when that starts operating, then anybody who is still building throwaway rockets I think is going to have a hard time finding customers. Astronomers insist space exploration remains as vital as ever when it comes to understanding our universe. This sort of commercialisation of space is really pushing things forward. It's like a new golden age of space exploration. So uh, it may start with space tourism, um, but the rockets that carry uh, space tourists up are also more than capable of taking scientific equipment up as well. But it's not just about exploring space. Some of the research that's being carried out now could fundamentally change how we get around. Of course there is uh, a sort of a, a great opportunity in the future to, uh, to take over from where Concorde left off, but rather than just going faster through the atmosphere, actually take long-haul aviation right above the atmosphere. While a ticket into space might be out of most of our price ranges, it's likely many of us will still benefit from the ride. Chloe Culpin, Sky News. You're watching Swipe. Coming up, one of the web's weirder trends, we take a look at gastronomic voyeurism. But first, it's been a big week for tech firms as Apple, Yahoo, Facebook, Amazon and Google all released financial results. So who's on the up and who's been struggling? Sky's Darshini David has the answers. 
The giants of the tech world have been in the spotlight this week as they unveiled results. Now, kicking off with Google, which saw its share price rise after the search engine reported a rocketing revenue. It took just over £10 billion in 2013, so up 17% on the previous year. Although the number of ads increased by 31%, the average price per ad fell 11% in the fourth quarter as the company failed to successfully harness mobile internet users. That's in stark contrast to Facebook, where strong growth in mobile advertising has helped the social network record a full-year profit of £1.5 billion. The company, which will be 10 years old next week, says it now has over £1.2 billion billion monthly users. Three quarters of them are using a smartphone or tablet. Mobile ads represented 53% of its total advertising revenue in the final quarter of 2013. Since it floated back in May 2012, Facebook's shares are up by 80%. However, Apple failed to impress investors. Profits of $13 billion or £7.9 billion in the three months of December were actually unchanged from a year earlier, adding to doubts about the company's future growth prospects. Revenues were up by 6%, again lower than forecast. Now, that's despite Apple selling 51 million iPhones and 26 million iPads, so more than in any other previous quarter. Things weren't so good either at Yahoo. The internet search firm reported a drop in revenue for the fourth straight quarter after revenue for display fell by 6%. Now, finally, the online retailer Amazon saw its share price tumble after fourth quarter results showed the company missing Wall Street's profit estimates for the crucial holiday period. It did make a profit of £145 million in the three months to the end of December, which was up significantly on the previous year. But... Revenue fell short of expectations, as did the sales outlook for the current quarter. Amazon's UK arm saw its biggest ever day of sales on the 2nd of December, that so-called Cyber Monday, when 4.1 million items were ordered. That's at a rate of 47 items a second. Quite a record. You're watching Swipe. Coming up, the virtual war that's cost thousands. But first... If you've ever eaten a meal alone at home and wanted some company, then don't worry, help is at hand. You could get out into the world, meet some people and invite them over for dinner. Or you could simply switch on your computer, pay some money and indulge in South Korea's latest fad. Swipe's loneliest reporter, Stuart Duggan, has been checking out the weird world of gastronomic voyeurism. How about some quality time? Just the um, lots of us. Park Seo Yeon, known as the diva, makes her money by eating in front of her computer. You might be sceptical, but thousands of viewers watch her show online. People enjoy vicarious pleasure with my online show when they can't eat this much or find that food at night or are on a diet. The diva makes an average of around £5,500 a month doing this. Her success is being put down to an increasing number of one-person households in South Korea. A quarter of homes in the country had just one person in 2012, and by 2030 it will be more like a third. It feels as if I'm eating with her. I think that's what the show is about. Especially, it's comforting for people who eat alone. The diva started eating online three years ago as a hobby, but soon quit her job to do it full time. She says she's not simply making money, but is helping society. It feels great when people say, I recovered from anorexia thanks to you. I'm in hospital doing or eating nothing, but thanks to your show, I can have a fun and delicious time in this weary place. Whether you think CEO Yon's job is sad or interesting, it's hard to argue with the numbers, both the money she's making and the fans she's attracting. Stuart Duggan, Sky News. You're watching Swipe. Coming up, garden warfare in this week's Games Review. But first, here's a roundup of anything you might have missed over the last few days. Angry Birds users have been getting, well, angry. If you're a fan of the games or you use Google Maps, it's emerged this week that you might be giving information to international spy networks. 
According to documents leaked by NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, mapping, gaming and social networking apps have all been breached. Reports in the New York Times and The Guardian suggest Britain's GCHQ and America's NSA collected users' details, including political affiliation or even your sexual orientation. GCHQ insists all of its activities were authorised, necessary and proportionate. Uh, app developers for years have been criticized by privacy advocates for not for over collecting information and for not making their applications safe enough for users and so what we're seeing now is the intelligence agencies are piggybacking on this recognizing that the information that you share is rich and and, and incredibly important for uh, they see is very important for their activities and basically any anyone who uses a smartphone could be fair game now Google's spending spree is showing no signs of slowing down. They've snapped up DeepMind, a London firm specialising in artificial intelligence. The deal is reported to have cost £240 million and could be connected to a project building next-generation robots. Two Bitcoin exchange operators have been charged with selling more than $1 million of the digital currency to users of the black market website Silk Road. Charlie Schrem, the CEO of BitInstant, and Robert Fiella from BTC King both face money laundering charges. Now, if you wear glasses but are a bit jealous about everyone who gets to wear Google Glass, worry not. Now, you don't have to try to balance several pairs on your head. The company has revealed its solution. Pictures of its range of lenses have been released, which include new frames and shades for the head-mounted display. And a virtual bloodbath has been taking place. One of the gaming world's most destructive battles has been happening in EVE Online, all because one player missed a bill payment to defend their team's base. 100 Titan megaships were taken out, thought to be worth over £180,000 in real money. Over half a million members take part in the game, where you can pilot starships. Now, January is a bit of a quiet month for games releases, so we decided to gaze into our crystal ball at some of the titles that are going to be coming out soon. Our man in the know, Games Ross Thompson, has been taking a look. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is coming out on Wii U very shortly, and it's a well-known Nintendo franchise that's been around since, well, the, the country franchise has been around since the Super Nintendo days. Uh, bringing it up to date in HD graphics with the Wii U, this game looks stunning. It's one of Nintendo's bankers of one of their real key franchises. Uh, the game itself is very similar to the others, so a side-scrolling platform game, going, trying to get from one part of the level to the other end. Uh, but this time around, there are a lot of different twists and turns, so the level bends in different ways. You come to the front of the screen, you can jump to the back of the screen, so they've brought it into the future. Diddy Kong is back, Dixie Kong is back, and there's also a multiplayer element to this game which really is going to help bring people into the franchise and keep that multiplayer fun within the household that you get from a Wii and also the Wii U. Fable Anniversary is coming out to on Xbox 360 very shortly and it's a game that was first released on the original Xbox over 10 years ago and what they've done is they've taken the original game and remastered it in 1080p HD. That way, you great big Balverin turd! It was probably, out of all of the Fable games that have come out, probably the best one that has actually been released. So, still set in Albion, the game looks just so good. And what you're going to do is, you're going to the people that have had a 360 over the last seven years have never had a chance to play the original Fable. Every decision you make sends you down a different consequence, as it were. So it's all about good versus evil. You can make a good decision, you can make bad decisions. Overall, Fable, great franchise, probably the best one of the lot. If you've not played it, or if you have played it, I would still suggest playing this over again. So Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare is going to be taken in one way or another by people. For me, you look at it and you go, that, like all the trailers they've done since E3 last year have all been trying to take a bit of the mickey out of Call of Duty. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to take the shooter franchise and make it a bit more fun and enjoyable and open it up and not every shooting game has to be all about killing humans and making it really bad for people. And it's a third person shooter, so if you take the likes of Battlefield, uh, four, for instance, you get different classes of character that you can play, like an assault engineer, a sniper, and a medic. 
with this, they've kind of done something similar, but you get four different classes on the plants and four different classes on the zombies. So, for instance, you've got a pea shooter on the, on the, uh, the plant side, and also um, on the zombies side, you've got a mad scientist that basically projects this ooze, which works as a medic to all the other zombies. So, all aimed around online multiplayer again, really, 24 people. It looks stunning, I've got to say. And for me, they're just taking that fun of that license and that brand and bringing it to this shooter game. <laughs> World of Tanks is a well-renowned PC free-to-play game that is now coming very soon to Xbox 360. An absolutely amazing simulation that is very much based around multiplayer tank battles. Uh, huge maps that are available, probably 10 new designs around that coming to the Xbox 360 version. And the whole thing is, with it being free to play, anybody on Xbox Live can download the game and play it. Up to 15 versus 15, so 30 players at a time. Three different game modes, and it's all around building up your tank and your resources within that tank. So within this game, there will be purchasable consumables, which can then buy you new bits for your tank, new people to work your tank, uh, new designs. And again, there's so many different versions of the tanks that you can get. They're all based on real life tanks and you're looking at around 100 different versions. Uh, so all in all, with it being free, we know how popular it's been from a PC base. It's a great coup for Microsoft to get this exclusively to their 360 console. And I can see it really performing very, very well based on other games they've released free to play, the likes of Happy Wars and Spartacus. That's it for this week. Remember, you can catch up with all the breaking tech stories all week on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone apps, and skynews.com. We'll see you next time.